Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So, if you haven't been following along, what I've done in the first few videos here on this channel is I've been working on the weapons and gadgets from the Mandalorian TV series on Disney+. Plus. So the first thing that I made was Mandalorian Whistling Birds. And then I made his flamethrower. So for this third project, I decided I wanted to try to make his knife. So you might be wondering, why is his knife, you know, special? What's what's mechanically interesting about that? Well, it's actually pretty interesting. There's one scene in The Mandalorian in the first season that if you're actually paying really close attention, it's the scene where him and the other taller Mandalorian are kind of facing off against each other. I don't remember what the conflict was about, but they both had their knives out, kind of at each other's throats. And you can actually tell if you look really closely that the blade is kind of phasing in and out or vibrating or shaking. So I was, I was curious what that was, and I googled it, and I looked it up, and it's called a vibroblade. So what's a vibroblade? Well, I looked that up on the Star Wars wiki, and it says, The weapon's hilt or handle usually contain a compact ultrasonic vibration generator, causing a blade to vibrate at an incredible speed, making even the slightest glancing blow become a gaping wound. So why would the blade vibrating make it any more effective? Well, it really just comes down to how a basic knife works. So if you have a sharp knife, say this thing that I got here, the sharp knife by itself, when placed against an object, doesn't do anything. It's actually the back and forth or the sawing motion that allows it to cut. So actually sawing into something is what allows it to cut. So if you've got something that can cause that knife to go back and forth at an ultrasonic frequency, you're essentially making thousands of little cuts per second so your cutting force is just exponentially greater than if you were ever trying to do it by hand. Okay, so now that we know how the fictional one in the series works, the next question is, how am I gonna replicate that? So I kind of put some thought into it and my thought process was, what in modern society, or what do we have current technology wise that is similar to this, that can already do it? So after a ton of revisions of designing the 3D parts, test fitting them and trying out the mechanical motorized assembly. I ran into a few problems. Uh, one was the moving parts that were touching each other that were plastic since I printed it out of PLA tended to melt and fuse together. So I uh, fixed that, corrected that problem and then I got to a design that would work. So once I had pretty much all of the handle stuff figured out, the next step was to work on the blade. So from start to finish, this is what the whole build process looks like.
Okay, so what I just got done doing is turning one of these, a uh, railroad spike, and I hammered it down flat into the general profile of the knife. So I got it forged out, hammered out the rough shape, and then quenched it. So now it's a hard blade. And now all I have to do is do some grinding and sharpening to turn this hunk of crap steel, if you can see that, into an actual knife blade. And then once we do that, we can assemble the entire thing and see if this blade is gonna work. Okay, first test. A little bit more power. Hell yeah, that's fast. <laughs> Maximum power! Jeez, that's fast. All right, so let's talk about final design. This is how my Mandalorian Viber Blade actually works. All right, so at the heart of everything, we have that 10,000 RPM DC motor, which is running a 90 degree bevel gear, which is converting that rotational force in a horizontal plane into a vertical plane because it's connected to another 90 degree bevel gear. And that is connected to this one. Now that shaft is connected to a essentially a wheel with the peg on the outside of it. So this is kind of a modified scotch yoke design for converting rotational to linear motion. And that is connected to a rod which is then connected to a piece that connects the blade to the whole assembly and these bearings right on these shafts to keep the blade straight in pretty much all 
direction. So essentially what is happening is when power is applied to this DC motor, this knife blade is actually going back and forth 266 times per second, which should be a considerable cutting force. Even though it's not ultrasonic, it's still pretty fast. Another interesting thing that I added to this is, you know, when you're in combat, like you would see in the movie, you don't want to have to pull out your knife out of its scabbard and then push a button for it to start vibrating. So what I added that was pretty interesting was a magnetic hookup to the back. So on the back here, we have two magnets and two DC electrical contacts that connect to the motor. So we have a 3D printed piece with this long cable which connects to the back of the knife. So in theory, this cable would be on the, your sleeve or, or something like that. And then as soon as you went to grab this knife out of its sheath, this would snap onto it and instantly give it power. So we have power, but the third wire is actually pretty interesting. What that does is right here we have a strip of conductive tape. And that conductive tape is tied to a, through this connection as well, to the magnets, a capacitive touch sensor. So you're instantly connected to power through this connection. And as soon as you touch it, it's turning on and off the relay which gives this power. So you're instantly getting power and then at the touch of a finger on the bottom of your knife, it's activating the knife itself. So you're getting that vibrational effect as soon as you're grabbing it, essentially. And another thing that that allows is that the battery does not have to fit inside this handle. It can be remote in some other part of the body, in a pocket, in a backpack, whatever you want. That way it doesn't take up space inside this handle, which I'm already having issues trying to make as small as possible. So anyhow, I think that's really pretty much it as far as design goes. You know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments and I'll answer it as best I can. That's pretty much everything that I wanted to explain on this design. So let's finally get to cutting some stuff and seeing how good this thing can actually do. Now, like I said before, just a forewarning, and I'm hoping this isn't relevant, but like I said, that 10,000 DC motor is not very strong. Should be pretty strong, but not that strong. So what I'm gonna end up doing is starting with something really easy to cut and kind of working my way up. And I'm hoping it performs well, but I'm not expecting it to cut through anything super hard. Okay, that's pretty much it. So let's just see what this thing can do. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to start with varying degrees of difficulty. So we're going to start with the tomato, then go kiwi, banana, grapefruit, apple, and this little pumpkin. And I'm going to start with each one. I'm just going to do one slice with the knife by itself to compare, and then I'll do it with the vibrator blade on so we can see what the comparison is. Okay, so first up we have Mr. Tomato. So pretty sharp by itself. Let's try it with the vibroblade function on. Okay, here we go. Seems like we're getting some sporadic action here. through the kiwi. OK, 
Okay, just the knife, banana, cut. Seems like it is being a little bit sporadic. I don't know if it's just because it's turning on and off too fast with the capacitive touch sensing or what, but let's see what this does. Oh, there we go. That sounds like it's supposed to. Dang, look at that. No problem. Yeah, all right. Okay, this is gonna be more difficult because it's pretty wide. Okay. Once you get through the skin, slicing pretty good. It's like it's bouncing around too much. I can't get it to slide. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Okay. Let's see what it does now. There we go. So it, it does have a little bit of trouble trying to get through something really thick, so I don't think we're going to get through that pumpkin. But look at this. Look at this fruit medley we got going on over here. Okay, apple. Based on what we've got going on so far, I don't think we're gonna get through the apple. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't think we're getting through this thing. I can't even get through it with just my hand. Okay, here we go. We'll get through the skin here. I suppose if I went forever. So yeah, if I press down too hard, it's, it starts tightening up in here on these bearings and stuff, and it doesn't want to push through that. If this motor was stronger, it would go through it no problem, I guarantee it, but there's just no way I can fit a bigger motor inside that handle. Might have broke it. don't think we're gonna get any farther than that unfortunately so I'm gonna take this thing apart and see what happened and get back to you guys and we can wrap this up okay so let's talk about the test results so right away in the beginning with the tomato we noticed that the knife was kind of sporadic well what I found out was that that was actually because um, there was a wiring issue in the back of the connector and what happened was the vibration of the knife itself actually caused the nut to spin off and so the electrical connection was constantly being broken and open again so that it wasn't getting a constant flow of electricity so the motor was kind of sputtering. That eventually came all the way off in the end when it stopped working entirely. Another issue with this knife is that it's not very strong. We kind of already talked about why but the reason is that the motor doesn't have enough torque to really get through anything very tough. The knife is sharp enough but as soon as you put too much strain on the motor it's going to stop or overheat and completely stop functioning. So this function, this system would work if it had a larger motor, then it would be able to get through some tougher stuff. But the test results showed that the furthest thing that it could get through was a grapefruit. It didn't really get through the apple very well, so we're not gonna count that. So then the last issue with the knife that I noticed in this testing and in the overall functionality was that it's just so loud. And of course you don't see that in the film because they're using some futuristic technology. Because of all the moving parts on this knife and the motor and the gears and the arm moving and everything, it just sounds more like a knife chainsaw, which is actually kind of cool. So I don't mind it too much. All right, so that's what went wrong, but what went right? So we did get all the way through the fruits, all the way up to the grapefruit. And the fruits that it did cut, it did cut really well when it was working the way that it was supposed to, especially on the banana when it must have had enough of an electrical connection to be operating at its full or maximum power. Then it actually was working really well and it was really impressive. 
So the second thing is that the cuts that it made were actually really smooth and really clean. And it didn't really require me to really do anything. The knife did all the work all on its own. Another thing that I would say went really well was the controls. So the touch control was actually super responsive. It wasn't delayed and it didn't trigger before I intended it to, which is sometimes an issue that I've had with capacitive touch sensing in the past. So then the last thing, which is very important from a visual or aesthetic perspective, is that the motor was moving the blade fast enough to create that blurring effect that I wanted. So just like in the film, if you hold the blade out and you turn it on, you, can, you can't really see the blade all at once. So it's, it still has that blurring or phasing effect like it does in the film. So overall, the project went pretty well. I think I achieved what I set out to do. You know, I had the desired effect. It didn't get through quite as many things as I hoped for, but I kind of expected that it would be able to with the, the small motor. So what am I doing next? Well, uh, if you've been paying attention to video games and stuff coming out, Cyberpunk 2077 is set to come out in December. So that's a hint to the type of things that I'm going to be working on next. Also, uh, the new Halo is going to be coming out soon. So got another project idea for that game as well. So if you're interested in seeing more projects like this one or the future ones that I plan on building from Cyberpunk and maybe Halo, consider subscribing so you get notified when those videos come out and you can see the cool products that I build from those games. And I know you guys have probably heard this before in other channels, but YouTube videos actually do take a lot of time and effort to make and publish, especially if you're building stuff in a, of a mechanical nature. You know, there's a lot of expense that goes into it and time in the designing and actually building and filming and everything. So if you are interested in uh, being more direct in supporting the channel and these future projects that I'm going to be doing, I finally did set up a Patreon for you guys, which I'm pretty excited about. Okay, so I'm just going to go over really quick some of the cool things that you can get from the, being a Patreon member for the TechForge YouTube channel. So some of the things that you could get is early access to the videos. I'm going to be doing something where I'm going to be picking three different projects based on general interest and then the Patreons are actually going to be the ones who vote on what project I actually do next. The most interesting thing in, for many of you, especially if you're interested in making things yourself, is what I'm going to call the vault. So the vault is going to contain pretty much anything related to the projects that I build. So for this knife, if you wanted to make your own, uh, which I would only encourage you do if you know a lot about mechanical things, for safety reasons. It's gonna have everything on there. So it'll have the 3D models, it'll have diagrams, theory of operation. I'll document my whole process in building it, the things that I learned and everything like that. So in the future, all of my projects are gonna be on there. Any STL files, 3D print files, diagrams for everything is gonna be on there for this project and any future projects. So if you're interested in building things that you see on my channel, that option will be available for you if you want to become a Patreon member. All right, so that's pretty much it for this project, guys. I hope you enjoyed the Mandalorian Vibroblade prototype. If you enjoyed this one, you might be interested in checking out the Whistling Birds and the Mandalorian Flamethrower that I did before. So if you're interested, check those out. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.